Today in class, we studied the elastic collisions. They're uh, special cases. The reason we call them special cases is because they are things we don't really observe in real life. When a collision occurs in real life, there's usually some loss of energy, uh, either to heat, light, sound, something along those lines. So this elastic collisions that we were talking about today in class, uh, we're going to define them uh, a different way so hopefully fully understand it. Uh, an elastic collision is an, when an object leaves the collision, uh, and so therefore when it leaves the collision, it's going to leave the center of mass, which is located in the middle right there between the two objects when we draw our picture, leaves the center of mass with equal magnitude but opposite direction as far as velocity is concerned. And you will only solve problems for elastic collisions when the problem says it's elastic or if I say it's elastic uh, because most collisions are inelastic or completely inelastic, typically in inelastic. So only solve elastic problems or try to attack them in, in this way when they are when you are told that they are elastic. And we're going to go through a couple examples here to try to make sure we're clear on, on how they work and uh, make sure we cover what happened in class today because there was a few questions that came up. Um, I'm not sure I covered it perfectly, so we're just going to go over it again. So here we are with a 5 kilogram object traveling at 10 meters per second. And then we're going to have another 5 kilogram object that is sitting at rest. And the velocity center of mass will end up being zero. It'll end up being 5 meters per second, not zero. I don't know why I said zero. It's going to end up being 5 meters per second. <clears throat> and the reason it's 5 meters per second is because when we do M1V1, so mass 5, velocity 10 is 50, and M2V2, mass 5, velocity 0 is zero, so we have 50 and then we're going to divide it by the total effective mass, which is 10 kilograms. We end up with 50 divided by 10, which is 5 meters per second. Those objects are going to collide. The center of mass is going to stay in the exact same place. And the velocity of center mass is still going to be 5 meters per second. But how we talked about doing it in class today was the drop, flop, and add method. So we're going to drop the 5 meters per second down and change the magnitude of each of the... Uh, velocities here. One thing I didn't think I said in class today is the reason why we do this is uh, we have to uh, kind of pretend that we are sitting on the center of mass so that it kind of becomes zero. So we subtract five uh, meters per second from our center of mass to get it to where it's like zero so we're basically transforming, uh, transforming the center of mass to zero so it's easier to deal with, so we're changing the coordinates of our system, basically. And so it makes it easier to deal with, and then we find out that it's easier to get the directions right. So what we've done here, and uh, the video ran a little fast, so uh, we have 5 meters per second after we subtracted 5 from the 10, and then we subtracted 5 from 0 and got negative 5, so now our velocity of center mass is as if it's zero now. And we now can flip the signs, because when they collide, we, in this case, they're going to go in different directions. Especially on the bottom down here, when we've changed our coordinate system to zero, where it's easy to deal with. The two objects are heading toward each other, and then when they hit each other, they will bounce off in the uh, exact same opposite direction. Same opposite direction, the exact opposite direction. And so now we have negative 5 and 5, respectively, so where the velocity of center mass is still considered to be 0. So we'll add the 5 back to get the velocity of center mass back where it's supposed to be, and it'll get what actually we'll see occur. What we saw today in our little mini lab was we sent the object at the other object, uh, the red car at the blue car. Uh, the red car hit the blue car, stayed still, and the blue car took off. So it was an elastic collision, and everything worked out well. And, and it's exactly what we're dealing with here. So usually, if we were just to calculate it, we'd do M1V1 plus M2V2 equals M1V1 prime plus M2V2 prime. Now this equation that we have, M1V1, M2V2, M1V1 prime, M2V2 prime, is uh, what we've done is we've basically had an elastic collision where we had two unknown variables as the V1 prime and the V2 prime. Uh, there's another way of doing this with the conservation of energy theorem uh, and you can do that and it takes about a half a page of algebraic work and, and, and it makes it very difficult to do. 
doing it with relation to the center of mass and drop, flop, and add back makes it a whole lot quicker and not as much uh, math intensive or algebra intensive. And so we're going to do another example where we are dealing with this um, where the numbers aren't so clean. <clears throat> so we're going to have a 3 kilogram object with 2 meters per second and a 7 kilogram object with 1 meter per second. Now these objects have to be going in the same direction and that's okay but we will we'll calculate the velocity of center mass anyway so it's 3 times 2 plus 7 times 1 all over 10 which comes out to 1.3 meters per second so our velocity of center mass will be right in the center at 1.3 meters per second now we have to get it down to 0 velocity of center mass has to get down to 0 to make it easier to solve so we'll subtract 1.3 meters per second and wind up with a 3 kilogram object now traveling at 0.7 meters per second and the 7 kilogram object will be traveling at negative 0.3 meters per second. So now they're traveling in opposite directions. Our velocity of center mass is zero. Makes it real easy to go ahead and flop the signs because when they hit each other going in opposite directions, they should bounce back in the other directions and, and with the same velocities, especially with the velocity of center mass being zero. So they're just going to, it's real easy. You just flip the signs uh, of the objects and therefore the vectors. And the velocity of center mass in the center is still in the same spot, still zero makes it real simple and then we will add it back and so our velocity because it's really not real life you don't you don't see that we can change the velocity of center mass from 1.3 down to 0 so we'll add it back up 3 kilogram object negative 1 negative 0 0.7 plus 1.3 is 0.6 meters per second and 1.3 plus negative 0.3 is 1.6 meters per second. So what we've done basically is we have solved for two unknowns without doing a whole bunch of algebra by using the velocity of center of mass and we have gotten our answer to our question solving for two unknowns and the objects are both traveling in the same direction like they started. They lost uh, some velocity on the first object and the other object gained some velocity so no kinetic energy was lost in this situation uh, they maintain the same velocity of center of mass and it makes things very nice remember you only do this method if it says it's an elastic collision or if it says the kinetic energy is not lost as long as kinetic energy is not lost it means it's an elastic collision or they say it's an elastic collision or somebody somebody like myself tells you it's an elastic collision All right, I'm going to do one more thing to try to make this a little bit more simple. It's going to look confusing in the beginning, but uh, it, we'll try it out and see if we can't make things a little bit easier because we had some difficulty today. So we have velocity 1 and velocity 1 prime, and then on the, on the bottom, I'm going to use those as u. So we're going to have u1 and u1 prime. And then we're going to use the velocity of center mass as if it was velocity of center mass. So we're dealing with basically five different variables here, v1, V1 prime, U1, U1 prime, and VCM. And we should know that uh, V1 prime equals U1 prime plus velocity center of mass. And how we know that is if you look at the top right equation where V1 prime is, uh, how we got V1 prime, or basically 0.6 meters per second there, is we took U1 prime, which is negative 0.7 meters per second, and added the velocity of center of mass to it, to get that number. So this is like writing an equation for what we did. We got 0.6 meters per second by taking the velocity down there in the in the blue bottom right hand section, which is negative 0.7 meters per second, and adding 1.3 meters per second to it, which was the velocity of center of mass. So we've written an equation for that. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to write another equation, and it's going to be for V1 prime, but basically now we know that u1 prime was equal to the negative of u1. So basically write an equation that substitutes something else in. We got negative 0.7 by taking u1 over here on the bottom left where it was 0.7 meters per second and flipped the sign or flopped the sign and made it negative 0.7. So v1 prime equals negative u1 plus the velocity of center of mass. So we've changed that equation a little bit more. 
We also know that u1 equals v1 minus the velocity of center of mass. Go ahead and finish writing that. So what we're saying there is how we got u1 is we took the velocity, 2 meters per second, and subtracted the velocity of center mass from it to get 0.7. So we're going to substitute that equation in for u1. So now we have negative, substitute in that equation, v1 minus vcm, v velocity of center of mass, into that spot. So we have negative that plus velocity of center of mass. And we're going to try to make this equation a little bit simpler one more time by distributing that negative. So we're going to distribute that negative in. And so we have negative v1 plus the velocity of center of mass plus another velocity of center of mass. And we're going to simplify that equation by adding the velocity of center of mass together. So we have 2 vcm minus v1 is how we find v1 prime. So if they're asking for object 1, mass 1, and they give you the velocity of that mass, and then they give you mass 2 and the velocity of that mass, and they ask for, in an elastic collision, what is the velocity of mass 1? Well, after the collision, the velocity of mass 1 is equal to 2 times the velocity of center of mass minus the original velocity that mass 1 had. And so this is another way to get it done a little bit quicker. So I'm trying to save you some time so you can get through these questions quicker on the AP exam. Today in class, we, uh, we went around in circles, had some confusion. Um, but the velocity of center mass is conserved in all collisions. And so now taking it down to zero allows us to do things a little bit quicker. And then writing another equation helps things out as well. So hopefully this helps out.